haven't already. Now we're going to work on a lot of side bending and some twisting and opening up the inner thighs. So this will actually be really good if you do have a cold or a cough. It helps to open up the, the chest and the, and the cavities so that you can breathe deeper. We're going to start in butterfly pose. So if you can bring the soles of your feet together. Rock a little bit side to side. You can always have support under the knees if you need it. Or if you prefer to have the wall at your back. And then just rest your hands on your knees or your thighs. Close your eyes. Create a nice tall spine. You can always let your chin gently drop down. And take some nice full deep breaths. Let your mind clear whatever you brought in with you or our conversations. And remembering that our hope or our goal is to turn inward and pay more attention to what we're feeling, making smart decisions with how we move our body throughout the practice. As you center yourself, notice whether your energy is high or low. If you have any aches or pains or discomfort, make sure you take care of those body parts. As always, choose something to keep your attention on whether it's your breath, or a word, or a phrase. And keeping your breath nice and slow and deep, open the eyes, lift the chin. And we're gonna take a twist to the right. So right hand behind you, left hand can go anywhere where you get the support. Keep the chest lifted, the spine tall, and just gently start to turn and rotate towards your right. You can look over the right shoulder, choosing whether or not you turn your head or your neck. Twist to the right, so same side, twisting to the right. And returning back to center and adjusting so that you can twist to the left. Again, find the place where your hands can rest and support you. Chest is tall, turning your gaze over the left shoulder. Eyes can be open or closed. Try to stay heavy in the legs. Nice tall spine, deep breaths. Release and come to center. And then one more time, twisting the same direction. So again, over to your left. Perhaps you can go a little bit farther this time. releasing back to center. We're going to come off our props and come into a child's pose. You can use the props if you need them for a little extra support, but we want the big toes to be touching. You can take your knees quite wide to start. Walk your arms out long. Get your forehead onto something, whether it's a block or a blanket. Give yourself some time here. So modifications if you can't do child's pose is cow or tabletop. If you need to tuck or untuck your toes, you can modify there. Or putting a blanket or a bolster between your thighs and your calves or underneath the tops of your feet will also help. We're just going to hold here for a few breaths. Like you can visualize all of the stuff that you did today, all of your busyness, gently coming out 
to the third eye, that space between your eyebrows, and being absorbed into your mat, and then down into the earth below that. Emptying out all that we don't need so that our practice can just be very simple and very pure. And be mindful of the props around you. We're going to take a gentle side bend to the right. So the arms are going to walk over to the right hand side. You can lift your head if you need to. And just stretch your arms out long over to the right. Breathe deeply into the left hand side of your waist. Words, you can come up into tabletop. And here you can either tuck the toes or keep them flat. If you need extra support, the blue blocks under your knees or the blankets. And a little micro bend in your elbows. We'll start to go through our cat cow movements. So inhaling, the belly goes down, the gaze goes forward. Exhaling, the back rounds up, the chin tucks. You can open or close your eyes depending on what feels more comfortable, or you're just going to keep moving through those two postures. So with the eyes closed, you'll be more inclined to pay attention to what it feels like. And then maybe know that if you want to stay a little longer in one that you can. Maybe taking one or two breaths, and then starting the movement again when you're ready. I'm going to start to loosen up through the low back and through the spine. Got a couple more. And then we'll meet again back at neutral. Once you're at neutral, you're going to take your knees closer together and just walk your knees back a little bit on your mat so that you can come into plank on your knees. So the shoulders come over top of the wrists, the hips come down and forward. And you have a choice of either tucking or untucking your toes. And even here, you should start to feel how you have the tongue through the belly. We're going to take a nice deep breath. And on your exhale, simply bend the elbows and let them go right alongside your ribcage as you lower to the belly. Once the belly comes down, untuck your toes, lift the knees, and curl the chest up for your cobra. And then once you lift up, you may need to adjust a little bit by rolling your shoulders down and back. Take a deep breath. Next, exhale, gently release. Press into your knees and your hands to push back up to plank on your knees. Hold here. Big breath in. Exhale, lower back down to the belly. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, release. Inhale, press back up. Plank on your knees to hold. We're going to do that one more time. Big breath in. Exhale, just let the elbows bend lower to the belly. Lift the knees, lift the heart and the chest. Release. Press into knees and hands, back to plank on your knees. And this time, let your hips go back again into a child's pose, a narrow knee this time. And with the narrow knees, your head might not come down to touch your mat, so again, you could grab a block or a blanket to rest on. And just give yourself a few breaths here. From here, lift your hips enough that you can tuck your toes back underneath. And we'll lift the knees and the hips up for our first downward facing dog. Once you're, you're up, you're going to bend one knee and then the other. Just start to, again, get some movement in the low back. Press into your hands, turn your sit bones up and back. Try to get your heels to come down towards the mat. Lengthen your spine. Big 
breath in. And on the exhale, you're going to let your knees start to come back down towards the mat. And so that you're kind of like tucking your knees under your chest. You're in what we call bear posture. And then you'll press back up into downward facing dog. So working on our control and our strength. Again, you can lift your heels, bend your knees, tuck them underneath your chest, squat down if you're going to bring your knees to the mat, hold. And then straighten your legs, press your heels down, downward facing dog. Now we got one more just like that. Lift the heels, bend the knees, tuck them underneath your chest, lower down as if you're going to touch your knees. Straighten the legs, press up, heels come down, down, down. And then next time, lifting the heels. This time, bring the knees all the way to the mat. And we're going to come to stand on our knees. So this is, again, a time where you might want the blanket or the blue block underneath your knees. And again, you can have either toes tucked or untucked, whichever feels more stable. We're going to take a nice, smooth, easy step forward with our right foot until you can come into a lunge. Yeah, so working on our balance to be able to do that transition smoothly might take a few tries. Once you're here, you can always inch your right foot further forward if you want to get a deeper stretch. And you can let your hips come down and scoop forward so you're in a low lunge. I'm just going to hold here, take a few breaths. And at any time, if you need to bring the blocks under your hands, just grab them from beside you. We're going to transition from here into our half hanuma or half splits. So the hips go back, the hands can come down to your mat, straightening your front leg, pulling your right toes back towards you. You should feel a nice stretch to the back of your right hamstring. Toes pulling back towards you, fingertips on the floor or onto your blocks. 
and then rounding forward over your left leg until you feel the stretch that is appropriate.
And then with control, slowly lower the knee back down, coming back to where we started with the right left leg extended. And then knee underneath chest, round your upper back, nose to knee. And release. And last one. A little bit faster so it's easier. From tabletop, right leg behind. Nice strong extended right leg. Left toes are tucked. When you're ready, reach up into your three-legged dog. Press, lift. Holding here. And then with control, bringing the left knee back to the mat. Right leg is extended. Once the knee's down, right knee under your chest. Round the spine, nose to knee. And release. The left leg extends behind you. Nice and strong, right toes tucked. When you're ready, lift up and back, three-legged dog. Press. Hold, take a breath. And then with control, right knee coming back down to your mat, left leg is still extended. And then underneath your chest, nose to knee. And release. And tucking the toes, downward facing dog. We're going to come off our wrists now, not to worry. <laughs> From downward facing dog, simply walk your feet up to the top of your mat, forward fold. Okay, just let yourself hang here. You can drive opposite elbows or you can let your arms dangle and rotate the wrists. So just give your wrists a little look. You can bend and straighten your knees. Let your head hang. You might want to walk out your forward fold just like you did the down dog. Letting the low back start to loosen up. A nice deep breath. Release your arms. Rise all the way up. Arms overhead. Take a full body stretch. And then simply release the hands down. Like, how's everybody doing? Is that okay? I know. No comments. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to step into our star pose. So we'll be facing different directions. You're just going to step your right foot back and then pivot your feet so that you're facing the long edge of your mat and take your arms up to the side so you look like a star. Yeah, and you can just, you can determine how far apart you want your feet, but they should be parallel to the short ends of your mat. Mm -hmm. And then holding here, your right hand is going to come to your right leg and your left arm is going to reach up and over so you're doing a side bend here. Your right hand will slide down until you get to where you can hold. Again, the gaze will go up towards the ceiling and you're reaching your left fingertips to the right. Looks good. Take a couple deep breaths. On an inhale, rise back up and switch sides. So left hand sliding down the left leg, right arm reaching up and over and your side bending to your left. Again, we're just going to hold. Time to take full deep breaths. If the top arm doesn't feel good, just take it to your hip instead. It's the same stretch. Just avoids all that pinching in the shoulder. And next, inhale, rising back up. And just take your hands behind your back. Interlace the fingers. Bend your elbows. Roll the shoulders. Then pull the knuckles down your spine. Lift your chest. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, hinge from your hips and come into your forward fold. Your hands can either rest on your low back, or you can let them fall up and over your head. So don't force anything, just go to where you can. Keep the little micro bend in your knees. That's it. One more breath. And then keep your legs the same, but release your hands down onto your mats. Let your head release, soften. And then again, the legs stay the same, but your hands are both going to walk over to your left foot. So both hands walk over towards the left. You can grab your foot if you like, and just pull yourself over towards the left leg. We'll take a breath here. And then you'll walk your hands all the way through center over to your right foot and do the same thing. Modify it just as needed. And then walking your hands back to center, using your fingertips on the floor for support, we're going to turn the heels in, the toes out. Bend your knees generously and sit down into like a, a goddess squat. 
And then once you have your legs positioned, we'll rise up so that we can bring our hands to our thighs. So you want to stack your shoulders over your hips. Yeah, you got it. Push your knees back. Sit down nice and low. Hold here. A lot of strength just to hold the shape. And then when you're ready, straighten the legs, rise up. And you're just going to pivot both of your feet so you can face again the top of your mat. You'll be in your warrior one position. So legs are straight, you're facing the top of your mat. Bend into your forward knee. Reach your arms up for warrior one. Yeah. Good. So you're pressing strongly into the back heel. The back leg is straight. The front knee is over ankle. Chest and hips are facing the front of your mat. We'll hold for one more breath. And then keeping your arms lifted, simply step your back foot forward so you're at the top of your mat and release the hands. Okay, we're going to do the same thing, other side. So left foot stepping back, come into your star pose. So your legs are wide, parallel to the short ends of your mat, arms are up to the side. And when you're ready, you're going to take your left hand to your left leg and reach your right arm up and over, side bending to your side, your left. Remember the right hand, you always rest on your hip rather than reaching up and over if that's more comfortable. Keep your legs straight with that little micro bend in the knees. And then next, inhale, rise up and switch sides. Side bend into the other side. And make sure that the, the twisting or the side bending doesn't restrict your breath, so keep it moving. Inhale to rise. Release your hands, interlace them behind your back. Pull the knuckles down, your tailbone, lift your heart, lift your chest. And when you're ready, on an exhale, fold forward. Again, the hands can just rest on your low back, or you can lift them up and over the head. Take a couple breaths here as you hold. And then gently release your hands back down to the mat. And walk both of your hands over to your left. You can sort of pull yourself closer to your left leg if that feels good. And then release, walk through center and over to the other side, same thing. Releasing, coming to center, using your fingertips for support, turn your heels in, your toes out. Bend generously through the knees until you're in that goddess position. And then rising up when you're ready. So just watch the balance. The hands can come onto the thighs for support. Stack your shoulders over your hips. Push your knees back. Holding here. It's nice and strong. Next, inhale, straighten the legs, rise up. Pivot your feet so again you're facing the front of your mat. Both legs are straight. Reach the arms up and bend into the forward knee so that you're into your warrior one shape. And squaring your hips and your chest towards the top. Good. Strong press into the back heel. Keeping your arms lifted, step the back foot to the top of your mat. Release your arms down. Good. So you can grab your strap that's by your mat. And you know that anytime we're doing a balance pose, if you feel more comfortable with a hand on the wall, just find your way there. You can make a loop with the strap. I'm going to use a short loop, but you might want one a bit longer. We'll see how it goes. And you're going to come so that you're standing into Dasana, feet are parallel. Your left hand can be on your left hip. The loop strap is in your right hand. And we're going to shift all the way to our left foot and just try to get your right ball of your foot into the strap loop. And then lift your knee up towards your chest. So this might be enough of a challenge just to try to balance here. <laughs> Use the ball if you need to. And only if you feel like you got here and you feel stable and you've got a wall to support you, we're going to kick the right foot out so that it's coming parallel to the floor. And you might need to adjust the distance that you have with your hand on the strap it might need to be closer or farther away from you. And we're going to push our heel 
heel forward, straighten the leg, and then you can always pull in the strap to raise your leg higher. We're going to try to keep our shoulders level and our hips level as we do this. And if, if you're going to fall or lose your balance, just let go of the strap so you can come out of it safely. We're going to hold for a couple more breaths. And then you'll bend the knee, unhook your foot, release it down, walk it out a little bit, and then we'll try the other side. Right hand to right hip. Once you have your balance, don't rush it. Get your foot into the, the loop. And just bring knee to chest first. I like my hand on the inside, but you might prefer something else. Find your balance first, and then simply straighten your leg right out in front until your leg comes parallel to the floor. You can always lift it higher if you choose to. And we're just going to come here to balance. So if you've got the wall for support and you're feeling pretty confident, just see if you can take your fingers off the wall, see how you do. Know that you can always take the fingers back to the wall. And we'll hold for another breath or so. <laughs> and then try to come out of the pose as gracefully as you went in. So bend the knee, release the strap, let your foot go down. And we're going to do the first side again. So back to doing your right leg in the strap. Now that we kind of have an idea of how it feels, what's going to, what it's going to, what's going to happen, maybe challenge yourself to not use the wall or get into the pose and then take your hand off and just see how long you can hold this on your own. I'll let you find your way into the position in your own time. Trying to find the balance between tension, the how much you're pulling on the strap, the positioning of your hand on the strap, what feels comfortable for your, your hand and your shoulder. And then trying to keep the hips level and the shoulders level. When you're ready, release the right side, take a little break, and then try the last side, the left side one more time. I always feel the frustration level rise in the room when it comes to balance poses. <laughs> know that we won't be here forever, right? Yeah, you guys got it. Releasing that side when you feel like you've been there, and it's time to come out. Let your strap go to the side of your mat again, and we're going to find at least one block. Some of you might want two, and they're going to go out in front of your toes, standing into that snap. And the blocks could go on their side, they might go on their edge, so it's going to depend on how much space you have in your hamstring. All right, come into a twist. So we're going to take the arms all the way up towards the ceiling, just take a big stretch. And then nice and gentle, release your hands to either your blocks or to the floor, forward fold. And just have a look at your toes. And the space in between the big toes is where you're going to try to place your hand. So your left hand is going to come down either onto the block or to the floor, wherever you've got. And it has to be far enough away from your toes that you can line up your shoulder over top of your wrist. The right hand will go to your right hip. And you're going to press down to get some weight into your left hand, let your weight come forward, and then start to turn to the right. So we're trying to stack our shoulders over top of one another. And hopefully we can do this with a fairly straight leg. So we want both legs to be as straight as we can without being locked. Left hand is down, right hand is on the right hip. And then if that feels okay for you, you could release your right arm towards the ceiling. And we're trying to stack again. Wrist, shoulder, shoulder, wrist, so that the arms are in a long straight line. Take it back to up here. Yes. Good. So holding this nice twist, if you can, take your gaze up past your right fingertips. Nice deep breaths. Good. And then when you're ready, release your right hand and switch sides. So it'll be the right hand down in between the two big toes, slightly out in front. Stack your shoulder over your wrist, left hand to left hip. Get the rotation first, that nice twisting action so the chest is going to the left. And then you can choose that option of straightening the top arm if you want. And again, we're just going to hold here. So make sure that there's some weight into your bottom hand. 
that'll help give you the leverage to open the chest. Nice and easy, release your hand, come back into your forward fold, you put up the stitch. I get it all the time in the side now. Right in the between the two ribs. Oh. And does it go away? It goes away. Yeah, but I have to move around. Move around and get it out. And it's always on that kind of thing. Yeah, twisting around. Yeah. But sitting so down. Has the same Who does? I have something else that does this have a similar tissue. Yeah. It's only one side. Oh no. At least it's one-sided. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're just hanging here at forward fold. And if you've got your blocks in your body, you can move your blocks so that you have one on either side of your feet. And then from here, we're going to press into our fingertips. Just look forward so we're half lift here. And then we're going to step the right foot to the very back of our mat. And let the right knee come down. So this is, again, where you might want to bring the blue block or a blanket under the back knee. And your hands can either stay on the mat, on your blocks, or if you choose to, you could bring your hands up onto your left knee. So lots of places to kind of stay or explore. At any time you want a deeper stretch, just simply slide that right knee a little farther back. And we're just going to hold here for a bit. twist to the left and lots of variations for you to play with. You can just simply bring your right forearm to your left thigh and start to turn to the left. Maybe that's enough. Or you can bring your right elbow all the way to the outside of the knee, bringing your hands into like a prayer pose and then getting a nice clip so that you can hold your twist. So don't be afraid to try one if it's not quite right, go to something else that works. All we want is the body rotating towards the left and keeping our nice low lunge strong and steady. On your next inhale, you're going to unclip or unwind and bring both of your hands to the inside of your left foot. Coming into our modified lizard pose. If you need to have a bit more space, you can walk your left foot over to the edge of your mat. And then again, you have the option of either just staying on your hands, or hands on blocks, or you can let your forearms come down. The forearms could also come down onto blocks so that the floor is not quite so far. And you're going to hang out here for a little bit with your left knee right to the outside of your left shoulder. Again, you have the option of adjusting the back knee at any time. And we're going to hold and wait for our hips to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> it might take some time, yeah. That's okay. Now I always like to put at least something one thing in the class that's a little bit surprising or a little bit fun, mostly it's because it makes it more interesting for me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to come back up onto our hands. The hands again will be on the inside of the left foot. And you're going to lift the back knee and just create a little bit of a bounce to your hips. And we are going to step the back foot up into our squat. <gasps> okay. Yeah. And if it can't land smoothly, don't worry about it. Just somehow get yourself into any version of a squat at the top of your mat. If you need blocks under your heels, if you want to be up a little higher, hands to thighs, it's all good. Toes are turned out slightly. Yeah. You can have your hands down for balance, or you're welcome to bring them up into a prayer hand. I always move around a lot when I come into a squat. I like to rock side to side, push the knees back. I don't like to do squat. You don't like to do <laughs> squat. <laughs> I like this a lot better than the lizard. Yeah. We, we have to do the other it. side still, so. <laughs> Just take a deep breath. Uh, for 
You're going to release the hands back down to your mat, straighten your legs, and then just heel toe your feet back so that you're in your forward fold. If you've lost your blocks in that process, you can find them again. And we'll press into the fingertips, look forward, and this time stepping the left foot to the back of your mat, and letting the left knee come down again onto your block or your blanket. Hands can either stay on the floor, or they can come up onto your right knee. Lots of options. Breathe. <laughs> so we're just in our low lunge now. We're going to let things settle. And then we're going to add the twist to the right. So when you're ready, you can either just bring your left forearm to the right thigh. Maybe that's enough of a twist. Or if you can get your left elbow to the outside of the knee, you can bring your hands into prayer and start to turn and rotate. Remember that our hope is we don't ever alter the breath. It still needs to flow nice and soft and gentle, not being held and restricted. Twist, bring your hands to the mat on the inside of your right foot. You can walk your right foot out a little bit to give you some more space. And then remember that you have the options of staying on your hands or on your palms or coming down onto your forearms. We would like our right shoulder to be right lined up with the inside of our right knee and adjusting again with the back knee at any time. Holding here. If you've gone down onto your forearms, come back onto your hands. Lift the back knee. You might want to play a little bit with a bit of a bounce. And remember that we're going to step the left foot forward so we land in a squat. Use your hands for support. Move around as much as you need to until you can come into whatever version of the squat you'll tolerate. <laughs> wherever you got into, hold here. And then you can release your hands. One hand will go out in front, one hand will go behind, so you can come down to sit. Just to make sure you land safely. And we're coming back into our butterfly pose. <laughs> <laughs> The key being land safely. <laughs> so we're going to rock side to side, bring the soles of your feet together. Again, if you want the blocks under your knees or the blue block underneath your sit bones, you can grab it. Good time to adjust your hands. You can either hang on to your toes or your shins or your knees. And options are to stay really tall and upright with relaxed shoulders and just holding here. Or if you prefer to get a little deeper of an expression, you can fold forward. And again, your options are to fold forward with either a straight flat back or to let your back round and come into a more yin-like shape. And perhaps bringing your forehead onto a block or something to rest. So you have lots of options, lots of different ways to approach the pose. Choose the one that's appropriate for you today. I will stay here for about a minute. So close your eyes. Remind yourself of whatever your intention was, whatever your focus was. And try to be really present with whatever you're feeling. And then know that if you need to move or adjust, that that's for you to figure out and to navigate the pose safely.
my hands bring the knees back together. And once you can get the soles of your feet to your mat, take your hands behind you or your hands behind you. Fingertips can face any direction. And just let your knees go from side to side. Windshield wipers. There might be some more cracking and popping going on. Center. Again, you may want the blue block still underneath you, so you can take your legs out wide into a straddle. And it's easier to get a little bit of a forward full motion if you adjust the flesh of your thighs. So rolling the thighs in, reaching back, pulling the flesh off your sit bones, manually adjusting the legs, pulling your toes back towards you, and pointing the toes so that they face straight up towards the ceiling and not curl back forward. And then you can use whatever you like out in front, perhaps a block or two, or even your bolster if you've got a little one there. And options are to stay upright with your shoulders over your hips, nice and tall, or you can add a little bit of a forward fold. Or if you prefer to bring your forearms perhaps down onto a block or something, you could support your head with your hands. And just choose a place where you can stay for again about a minute. Close your eyes, try to soften into this shape. twist to your right. So one hand behind you, left hand can go anywhere where you can get the support. Start to turn and twist towards your right and just use your fingertips as support so that you don't twist too far too soon. Keep your breath moving. Turn to center. Always pause and then we'll twist to the left. So same thing. Find the support where you need it with your fingertips. Start to turn and rotate to the left. Turn again back to center, and you're going to just tuck your right foot in next to your groin. You might need to move around a little bit and adjust. And then we're going to side bend over the left leg. So I like to have my left forearm down onto my left thigh, and start to turn a little bit towards the right, and then just lean over towards your straight leg. So you might need to slide your forearm out along the length of your leg, so people like to reach their hand out, whatever feels good. And then the right hand can either stay on your hip or you can reach it up and over your ear towards your left foot. And wherever you got to, just continue to work the eyes up towards the ceiling, roll your right shoulder back and keep lengthening out along the left leg. Full deep breaths wherever you're at.
Next, big inhale, rise slowly back up. And we'll switch legs. So the right leg will be straight, left foot tucked in. Move around a little bit. And then right forearm to right thigh, left hand to left hip. Start to turn towards the left and then just slide yourself out and along the right leg. Again, left hand can reach up and over or it can stay on the hip. Just keep turning your gaze up, sliding out along the leg, taking nice, slow, deep breaths. So every exhale, you should feel like there's some softening, some sort of release. Try not to force it. Let it happen naturally. And then with your next inhale, slowly rise back up. And we're going to come into legs up the wall. So just ease your legs back underneath you. And take all your props and your knees back to the wall. Have your purple bolster nearby in case you want that underneath your low back. As I come, there's white blankets for your mat. And swing your legs up the wall. Move around until you're comfortable and you can settle. And then you can find your white blanket, your eye colors. If you know that you like to have the bolster underneath your low back, you can go there right away if you're not sure. First try it with just your legs at the wall. And then if you want to lift your hips, slide the bolster underneath you. Yeah. Okay, is there a you can forget the wall? Yeah. And then you can lay down. Yeah. You want me to stay behind you? Yes. Yeah. This is going to go up. Can okay. you scoot that way? Yeah. That might be close enough for me. So yeah. That's all I'm going to do. Perfect. Perfect. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So move around until you can be comfortable. If you're really tight in the backs of your legs, you know that you don't have to have your sit bones all the way to the wall. You can be a little bit farther away and even with a, a bend in the knees to ease that out. Take some deep breaths. Let your legs feel heavy. If you feel like you've settled, just take your arms up overhead and do like a really nice stretch. Again, just testing the water, see how your shoulders will tolerate that. If it seems like you could keep your arms up overhead, you can stay here. If it's a bit too tight, just take your arms more out to the side, like either airplane wings or cactus arms. And if that's still not comfortable, bring your hands to rest on your belly. You're always welcome to stay if you found somewhere really comfortable. Otherwise, we're going to move into our butterfly shape again, but now on the wall. So, soles of your feet together, let your knees open up. Let your feet slide down the walls wherever they'll rest. And you can always have your hands on your thighs if that feels more supportive. And then again, you just want to let gravity do the work. Let time 
do the work. All you have to do is soften and relax and breathe. Allow yourself to soften even more. Look for those parts of the body that are chronically tight or holding the tension that we all have and see if you can consciously relax it. Bring your knees back together and just wrap your arms around your shins. Give yourself a hug and a squeeze. Then you can extend your legs back up the wall. And you can either stay here or you can open your legs up into a straddle split on the wall. Or you can go back into butterfly if you prefer that shape. Whichever one you choose, just take some nice, slow, deep breaths. Let your inner thighs soften and relax. Let your low back release.
slowly and carefully bring your legs back together. And one last time, let your knees come down towards your chest. You can wrap your arms around the shins, you can rock side to side. Rocking back to center. Nice and slowly and carefully roll over onto one of your sides. Take a few breaths there. And once you've had a few breaths on your side, just ease your way up and find your way into Shavasana on your back. You can cover yourself up with your blanket. Get your pillow and your eye cover. Make sure you're really comfortable. Too close, Too close, yeah. <coughs> if you prefer to do your shavasana in child's pose or any other shape, know that you can go there. As long as you can rest. Remind yourself of your intention and that there's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do right now. Just rest and breathe. Enjoy the quiet. Enjoy the stillness. 